So guys, today I will be finally sharing with you my thoughts on the perfumes from a pretty well-known niche brand that is called Italy Radio Ranch and probably I mispronounced its name, so I'm very sorry for that. Please feel free to teach me how to say it correctly down below in the commentary section. But although I have read so many reviews on the perfumes that are pretty well-known, for how crazy some of them are, I have never had an opportunity to test them out in the shop and thanks to the owner of the Paris-based niche perfume discovery website called Tommelier de Parfum, I got a discovery set of a few of their fragrances, my impressions on which I will be sharing with you in this video. And if you want to find out more about that, then please make sure to keep on watching. But before we get started, I would like to ask you to give this video a thumbs up in case this is one of your favorite brands. And definitely subscribe to my channel because I will be continuing experiencing different brands available on this amazing looking website that I highly recommend you guys to check out. A link to it you will find down below. And next up, I think, is going to be BDK Perfume. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Now you'll have some time to do that and that, and um, then we can get started. Hello everyone and welcome to my acquaintance with Etat Le Radio Ranch of Fragrances. I got a nice selection of a few of their perfumes and I would like to know if you have any in your collection currently. I am just, just starting my experience with them, but um, so far I'm pretty amazed because this is one of those niche brands that actually stands for uniqueness. They are willing to surprise and even shock us with their names and sometimes even with the notes. And I also feel like the storytelling is very important for them. That's why I will be reading for you the stories of the fragrances and then tell you how I feel about them. So let's jump right into this video but before I get started I just want to let you know that there are construction works going on outside and my neighbor is playing music pretty loud so that's my crazy neighborhood please don't mind it and uh, the first fragrance today we are gonna talk about is called she was an animali and uh, I kind of like this name actually this perfume is the result of something unexpected because the perfumer of it Daniela Andrea played with Carto and this is Givaudon's artificial intangi intangi oh my god I cannot pronounce its name power tool for suggesting formulas and she gave it beloved and familiar notes and Carto suggested an overdose of two ingredients and she took care of the rest. Well, you know what? I can tell you which two ingredients those are because this is a pretty intense iris musk scent and you might think that the overdose of both of them will create a pretty powdery scent and I was surprised that um, it's not like that because this is not your lipstick iris and it's not your animalic musk. In fact, to me personally, this is a rather silvery, almost icy powdery scent that is a little bit sad, that is a little bit nostalgic and definitely reminds me of something I don't know what exactly that is, but I have smelled fragrances like this in the past for sure. However, I really like how easygoing it is. You can overspray it and uh, it's not going to be too much. This is a very friendly everyday type of perfume. And overall, I think that this artificial intelligence is going to be the future not only of the world, but also of perfumery, of course. Please let me know how you like that idea. But She Was an Animal is a lovely scent for men and women. It is perfectly unisex. So if you have any experience with it, please let me know if you get this silvery and nostalgic and very cocooning, comfortable iris scent like I do because I always imagine like wearing a big scarf during the winter time that will keep me warm and satisfied when I have this fragrance on. But something a little bit different would be the next one that is called Remarkable People. And I believe that this brand created this fragrance for their audience that um, is also looking for something mysterious for something a little bit different, something a little bit uh, out of the comfort zone. And um, I personally really like the opening of this fragrance because it is slightly green, 
but also so bubbly and I believe that is because of the champagne accord in the top note that I really smell. It is fizzy, it is citrusy with note of grapefruit, even a kick of cardamom, but although I really like the opening of it, oh my god, in the dry down it turns a bit odd because there is curry tree note, black pepper, jasmine and some woody notes and I don't know why but I think about the toilet refreshing spray, you know what I'm talking about? It has this strange green piney note but I feel like um, I'm in between like and don't like but I definitely have a lot of fun wearing this perfume so please let me know how you feel about it. Anytime I have it on myself I'm thinking about men so maybe it's rather suitable for men than women although I would categorize it as unisex as the majority of their fragrances and uh, under that category also well for dangerous complicity and I was so excited for this perfume I won't lie I thought this is gonna be my favorite and it's not but the story behind it I mean the marketing oh my goodness listen this is the scent of the skin on skin intimate and sexy edgy but smooth the scent of leather and powder or rather the softly scent trace a bad boy's leather jacket would leave on the powdered skin of a femme fatale and doesn't that sound sexy? I know it does. So I want to spray it on skin that's why I took off my big jacket and it's lovely and I love the notes of it and I can smell almost all of them. The powdery osmanthus, the boozy room, the flowers such as Elaine Elaine and Jasmine, the creamy coconut with sandalwood, leather and spices. But for some strange reason to me personally, it smells like the inside of the car that has been standing under the hot sun all day long and then when you get in you will just smell the scent of the fabric seats <laughs> so i don't know it's abstract it's cool it's interesting i like when perfumes don't smell like notes but like um you know a certain thing that you might uh, think about smelling it but yeah it's just like not my thing i wouldn't buy a bottle of it and i'm glad that i had an opportunity to test it before you know, like investing into full size. That's why this um, website is so cool because they can help you to choose a fragrance. There is like a beautiful um, guide. You can just go for a certain direction, like powdery or woody or fresh. And you will also receive a 20 euro rebate code, just in case uh, you happen to like something and would like to get it in a full size. Little update, little update. So after a couple of hours, me editing this video, I realized that I smell the powder and the leather jacket and it's pure elegant sex in the dry down. So it's interesting that some of these fragrances are bad in the dry down and some of them are more interesting in the opening. Let me know if you've noticed that fact about this brand too. Alrighty guys, let's move on to the fragrance that is the essence of this brand and I believe this is how it smells inside of their boutique. So this is Archives 69 and uh, the reviews on it are very polarizing. So I'm surprised there are no aldehydes in the official notes breakdown. I think uh, if we had them people in Fragrantica would vote for them like crazy because the opening of this scent is a uh, very sharp. There are no aldehydes officially but I smell them. I uh, there is pink pepper, paprika and uh, mandarin orange, plum, incense and orchid, as well as, well as comfort, benzoin, musk and patchouli. And I remember people complained about it to being about uh, it being too camphorous. And I would say it is um, very complex. So it is spicy, it is camphorous. Me, for me personally, it smells like a fragrance from the past. I like its vintage vibe. It's like clean and dirty soap. And a bit of this fruity smokiness is there too. So it's a very mature scent. And I find it is sexy, but probably not for everyone. But something with what I fell in love at first sniff and is hands down my most favorite discovery from this brand so far is 500 years and you guys the bottle of it is so stunning and this fragrance is a bit more 
expensive than the rest, but it is so worth its um, pretty high price tag. So what I love about this fragrance is the sweet rose that is in the company with patchouli, with woods, with oud, and um, it even reminds me of my beloved Intense Café by Montal because of the sweet rosiness that in Intense Café is rather sugary and in here it is beautiful cacao powdered over rose and you will get more in here because there is oud, there is suede and just smells so expensive and I definitely recommend you to check it out. And you know, although I personally think about date night wearing this perfume because it's quite dark to me, in fact, it's actually pretty bright, like expensive, delicious gourmand. And that, guys, was all for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions left, I'm here to answer them. You tell me what's your favorite and what should I try out next from this brand. And if you want more content from me, feel free to follow me on my social media. All the helpful links are going to be down below in the description box. And make sure to subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and set up your notifications, because next I will rank BDK perfumes. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure to stay tuned and smell good. We'll see each other in the next one really soon. Bye!